we've got to get the layers. Critical, important. I don't know what other words you want me to add to it. Life or death. What I'm gonna show you today is how to use a good quality espresso machine at home to make a whole variety of coffees. In particular today, we're gonna to look at cappuccinos, some lattes, we're gonna look at the espresso again, the short macchiato, which is very popular in many instances, and even the long black. The long black, simple coffee, but people still stuff it up. What's wrong with people out there? I'll show you how to make a perfect one of those as well. We have machines here at our disposal. There are so many variations of these machines. But you know what? It didn't always start like this. It started probably like this and a hand crank. But we want to be able to do things maybe a little bit more precisely. So this now becomes the most important part of the coffee making process, your grinder. Testing this, the, the coffee as you grind it is important. So that's why we grind what we need each and every time. The finer the grind, the more this machine, your little espresso machine is going to struggle. We've got some coffee here. The grind was so fine that it was almost like trying to get water through concrete. By coarsening up the grind slightly, you can start to see a little bit of a white fleck. That white fleck comes from the husk. Being able to see a little portion of that each and every time for, the, for a machine like this, critical. With espresso machines, the grind has to be somewhat fine. Almost if you consider table salt and pepper, that's the type of grind we need for an espresso machine. So as you can see, we're grinding a little bit of coffee now, just enough to fill my handle. That's really what I want. What we're going to do now is use this hand tamp to flatten the coffee, press it. But in many instances, people press down really hard. So what I'm going to do is just place this on top very gently, make sure it's level, and now I'm not doing anything, gravity's doing everything. All I'm going to do is polish the surface by twisting my tamp. As I do that, I push a little bit of coffee up into the inner walls. What I wanna do now is get that coffee down by just tapping the side, making that coffee fall down onto the surface and then polishing the surface again. In every instance, I'm not pushing down at all. If I've done this correctly, and this coffee's fresh, by turning this upside down, it should stay in there. And it does. We've got our coffee in our handle, ready to now attach it to the group head. Uh, that's warm, but we need to warm it through even more. Just run some water through the group head. That'll clean it from any previous coffees, and then it'll warm it up. Then putting the handle in is also very important. About 45 degrees from the starting position, Pull it to the right to lock it in, and as it gets to that point, make sure it's tight. We are now going to actually measure what 30 mils is. 30 mils is the standard for one shot of coffee. But we, let's measure it. What we want to see now is a nice flow, a nice crema being formed. It should be taking somewhere between 20 to 25 seconds. At that point in time, you can then manually turn it off in this instance for this machine. This is what 30 mils looks like. So when we measure it, we're doing it for a reason to start to create consistency in the way we make coffees. Consistency is king in this business. So we've got approximately 30 mils in our little shot glass. That also transfers to being the base for the majority of the coffees. We're now at the point where I'm gonna make you a cappuccino and a latte. We're gonna start adding milk to our espresso shots. But this time round, we're gonna put our coffees into a big cup and a big glass. We're making a cappuccino and latte. Same time frame, exactly the same process when making our coffees. Now I'm gonna give the machine some time to regenerate, build its power levels up. So I'm going to turn it on to steam. There will always be some water that comes out of your steaming wand. So always expel the water first. We don't want that water going into our milk, we want to steam the milk. Now, we've got a couple of different size jugs that we can use. This is a 300 mil, this is a 600 mil. In this instance, try to avoid using this one, by the way, because it, it actually steams up really quickly. Small movements, incorrect movements, create really bad results. So this one, the 600 mil, will give you a lot more time and will allow for some inconsistencies, but generally speaking, the results are better. Really important that you don't 
put less milk than required or more milk than required. In this case, the 600 mil, the bottom of the spout maximum level, because that will allow us to expand that milk and almost double in size. So the, the technique here is to place this steamer approximately a centimetre in the milk. If you had crosshairs here, it would be just off centre. And that slight angle is really important, right? That tilt creates a bigger whirlpool. What I'm trying to do now is very gently pull the jug down. So as it warms up, I'm trying to pull this down to try to slowly increase the volume. As soon as it hits the right temperature, I turn it off, which is approximately 60 to 65 degrees, okay? As you can see, we've virtually doubled in volume. That's all cream, always. Wipe off your steaming ones immediately, and then again, flush them out immediately. I keep it swirling because the surface of the milk needs to look like paint, the same consistency as paint. If you allow that milk to sit there and separate out, then what you're doing is allowing the milk to settle to the bottom because it's heavier, and the froth to settle to the top. It's really difficult to pour that milk because that separated froth just falls out at the end. I want it to flow. Cappuccino and latte. Cappuccino is a third coffee, a third milk, a third froth. It requires the most amount of froth. I like to add chocolate powder to the top of my cappuccinos first. And then when you pour it, it's a simple method. And I call it the Ohio method because you start low, you raise it up about 10 centimetres, come back down, Ohio. Now we're going to be making a latte. A latte is literally, by translation, a milky coffee. A latte is 30 mils of coffee, mainly milk, approximately a centimetre of froth. The, the key here is the cream on the top, and of course, it's in glass, nothing hides. So you've got to get that centimetre right. On this particular occasion, I've got enough froth to just about make this, but using a small opening here well, it may not give you the result that you want creating a bigger aperture can sometimes work. So pouring it out through the side of the jug will allow more froth to come forward. All right, so we've made our cappuccino. We've made our latte. We're gonna make a coffee called a short macchiato. A short macchiato is one shot of coffee with a little bit of the cream of the milk. It's all about layering and how to create that, those layers. Short macchiato drinkers are very fussy about the layers. We've just put our coffee shots into our little demitasse glasses. What we're going to do now is add some of the cream of the milk. I've just steamed up a little bit of milk, but I'm not going to use the actual milk component. I'm going to use the cream. And all I'm going to do with my little teaspoon is skim the cream off the top before I place it into the middle. Macchiato comes from the Italian word to stain or to mark the top of, which is what we're doing with just the cream of the milk. So it'll need two or three of these little dollops into the same spot before you get the result which is the layering. The heavy part of that cream, which is the milk, will start to suspend itself in the coffee and create those three layers. We've got to get the layers. Critical, important. I don't know what other words you want me to add to it. Life or death. One of the final coffees I'm going to be making for you now is my favourite coffee, the Long Black. Again, Italian based in terms of its name, the Lungo. The Lungo is a longer pour. With the Long Blacks here, we add water, hot water. We add the water because an extraction of coffee is approximately 30 mils per shot. So in this case, 60 mils of coffee is gonna go in here. So it's a double shot of coffee. But 60 mils will not fill this cup to the appropriate level. So the hot water component has to be approximately somewhere between 60 to 90 mils of water, depending on the size of the cup that you use. So all I'm gonna do is add hot water to my cup first. So this is approximately 60 mils of hot water into my cup. We're now going to add our coffee to this. Same routine, nothing changes. And then you run both shots of coffee into the cup. And now you have a long black. It should have a beautiful crema layer, consistent all the way across. Even long black drinkers deserve to have their coffee made correctly. I'm a long black drinker. You make me a bad coffee, I know where you live. Okay, so we've had a big day of making coffees. We've got our cappuccino, always served in a cup, 30 mils of coffee, probably a third milk, a third froth. Lattes, again, same amount of coffee, 30 mils, 130 to 150 mils of milk and approximately a centimetre of the froth. And the short macchiato, which is again, 
made with a shot of coffee, two to three teaspoons of just the creamiest part of the froth, and my go-to coffee, which is the long black, but please make sure you make it correctly. Half a cup of hot water first, two shots of coffee on the top. All of them need to look correct before they taste correct. But the one thing I want you to do every single time you make a coffee is do it with a smile on your face and love in your hearts. Thanks guys, see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.